you know, I started this whole project by looking at, at OkCupid and the data and writing the blog that, that I did. And hopefully we'll one day do again very soon. Um, and it's the best data set in the world because it's people, all strangers, all making judgments of one another, all probably trying to sleep with each other, which is also adds a certain uh, piquancy to the whole thing. Um, so you know, you, you look at the data and you, you, you really get a kind of special window into people's psyche, kind of like if you could see everything that was going on at a big bar on a Friday night. And you know, you see that, that men are the kind of pursuers in relationships at a four to one ratio. And that kind of correspondingly, uh, you know, women, because they're getting four messages to everyone they send out, like they respond a lot less. Um, and, and response rates track directly with how hot the writer was, is. Uh, but then you also see that once people start talking um, and they establish a rapport, which for OkCupid okay, is four, four, four messages going back and forth, that attractiveness kind of goes out the window. At that point, your personality takes over after the fourth message. Um, you see that, uh, in general, women's opinions of men's looks, again, in aggregate and on average, is about half of what men's opinions of women's looks are. So they, they kind of get a 50% discount, just ice cold. Uh, on Tinder, it's actually a lot more. It's something like a 10% a discount, or 90% discount, sorry. The other way, they go a tenth. Um, so these environments, th I think, this is, I, I can't prove this, my intuition is that the more sexual an environment, the larger that discount um, from, from men to women, or from women to men. Okay, keep his user base, in theory, on paper, is as liberal as you could ever want it to be. You know, you ask people if they're a Democrat, if they're progressive, yes, 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 you know, two, three to one. Um, we're all highly coastal, very little red state, very blue. On a piece of paper, okay, keep it should be a very um, progressive place. And, and maybe it is, because who knows what the rest of the world is like. But the data that we have, you know, black users get three quarters of the, the messages, the, 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 the positive votes. Uh, the, the, their, their attractiveness ratings are three quarters of, of an average white user, um, or, or Latino user for that matter. Um, they get replied to about three quarters of the time. It's pretty blanket. Um, Asian men also get a similar discount, but not Asian women. And, and then you go and you look at, at Date Hookup, which is the site we run. Um, you look at the data from Match.com, you see the exact same patterns, maybe not in the exact same ratios, but the same basic up-down yes, no pattern when you compare any race with another race. And it's, it's kind of suggested it's kind of a, I won't say universal in the sense of permanent pattern, but it's certainly like a state of affairs right now in um, the American psyche. I mean, in these three, those three sites alone, um, you know, that they registered maybe 30 million people in the United States last year. So it's not like some small sample. I mean, that's about half of the single and looking people in, in the country, to my best guess, to the, if you look at the census numbers. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty meaningful. Um, and, and pretty depressing thing to kind of digest, you know. Insofar as like Grindr or any of these other sites that kind of hook up apps are hook up apps for gay men, OkCupid okay, is a little bit more of the relationship site and we have a, a very strong um, gay user base, men, male and female, and you know, so we get to look at their patterns and you know, they're basically the same as straight patterns, you know, which I think is um, meaningful in the context of you know, marriage equality, because it, it, certainly the, the pre-marriage relationships seem about the same when you actually go and look at the data, which I think is, you know, a strong argument for any type of relationship being held apart legally for sure, right? Um, I think the most significant thing that people do on OkCupid, because it's a precursor to going out, going home with somebody, getting into a relationship with somebody, getting married, any of that stuff, is just messaging, right? And we found some kind of crazy stuff like, uh, it doesn't really matter how long your message is. You know, the, the best messages are very short, 40 to 50 characters. But by best, you know, they're, they get a reply 21, 22% of the time. And kind of all messages get a reply maybe 19, 20% of the time. So it's not like a massive increase. Um, it does help you to spend a little bit more time on your message. We put a little uh, script to just track the time since the you know, com composition window opened. And so if you put a little bit more effort uh, into your message per character, uh, it will yield slightly better results, but again, you know, it's 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 not a huge effect. So we were we were surprised at both of those things. I thought that longer messages would either, either do super badly or do super well, and that if you spend a lot of time at least on your message, it would do better than something you just like and type it and go. You know, um, as a writer, it's a little sad to say, but it it kind of comes down to just like it does in person. There's so much like first impression, which online is your picture, frankly. You know, um, that your actual words aren't as relevant as you probably wish they were. 
So to that point, you know, people being the kind of like intuitive, to, people en masse being the intuitive geniuses that they are, the wisdom of the crowds or whatever, you know, you have like 20% of messages from guys to women are copy pasted from other messages that the guys have sent. They just, they found something that for whatever reason either works or typifies them or that they like or whatever it is and they just can just blast it out, you know. Um, and those actually, they do worse. Um, they do, but not that much worse. They do like 70, 75% of, of a normal message a theoretically unique message. Um, and so you get, you, it's, it's very easy to arrive at the, at the uh, results per unit effort is like sky high, just cut and pasting, right? And so we, we, it, that probably will be something that increases over time. And we, we don't, we, we thought about trying to kind of, it's very easy for us to know whether a message has been cut and pasted from another message, obviously, right? You, know, you just compare it. Um, but we just decided to let those things go because, you know, it's, it's, it's just the online equivalent of, of people having their favorite anecdote about themselves or this one time they got into this crazy bar fight or I don't know, some dumb story, how I got the scar, that kind of thing at a bar or just like a standard pickup line that you might use. So it's one of these things that on, the online version of it seems very weird and kind of unsavory to be like, oh, this dude just sent the same message to like 40 people. But I've probably told the same story. Everybody that I'm friends with has probably heard a large set of the same stories from me, you know, and it's something that people just do.